So let's flip coins for just a few minutes and talk about monopolies. The rather opposite from farming. Farming, where you have millions of people doing it, thousands of people doing it. Monopolies, you got one person doing it. Definitionally, it's when one company produces the entire market supply of a particular good. I I tend to be I'm really strict with my definition of monopoly. There's other textbooks that say they're gonna be like they say all or most. I'm kind of old school and I'm like all. Because if you're only doing most of it, well guess what? There is competition. People do have options. There are options to Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office ain't on 100 percent of computers out there, 13% of the max. You know, having them have office on them, but they get with the numbers and whatever they have. I can't even think of what the names of their apps are. I don't use them. There's version office, there's Libra Office, there's Google Docs, there is but there are other options. These small, but they do exist. Um so that's gonna end up altering behaviors. Microsoft's behavior is different because of the existence of Google Drop, Google Docs. Uh, the whole Office 365 is partially because of Google Docs and what Google is doing with Google Docs and they're getting to doing whatever online stuff. So like in Google Docs, you can be editing a document, I can be editing the same document at the same time, and I can see that you're in the document, you can see that in the document, and I can see a little red cursor showing me what changes you're making, you can see a little red cursor showing you what changes I'm making, you can do that kind of stuff in Google Docs. Well, Microsoft was like, well, we need to do that too. And why, did they, why are they doing that? Because Google Docs is doing it. So they're... They, uh, they ain't really a monopoly. They kind of still are, in some ways, trying to act like they still are, but they aren't. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to probably call them a monopoly, just for illustration's sake. sake. But you had a slide that looks like this for pure competition. Now you have a comparable slide for monopoly. Here you have a single seller, single producer. Yes. Family, there's an employable a monopoly and a monopoly. Sellers, um, yet, well, not really. I sort of jokingly like there could, but there are other people that don't. Other businesses don't belong to sellers. There are but the same the same but yeah, so, but yeah, they, they would be monopoly and monopsony at the same time because they control all the selling in the area. So then, if you're going to be working somewhere, you're going to be working for that. Um, Monopoly, monopsony at the same time as coal mines in West Virginia. We talked about them a few weeks ago. If you didn't get paid dollars, you worked for coal mine or you didn't work. And you didn't get paid dollars, you got paid basically coupons that you could use to spend in the store in town and who had money to set up the A store in town? The coal mine company. So the store belongs to the coal mine company, so you're working in the coal mine for the coal mine company in order to get money to spend to buy stuff from the coal mine company and coal mine store because that's the only store in town. So then they got to the point of, well, we're just going to give you over glorified coupons and script, what they call it. So guess what? It's only going to work in this holler, so you can't take the money that we're paying you and leave town and go somewhere else if you decided to hobo on the train from one place to that. That would be a monopoly and monopsony at the same time. But one company is doing the producing or selling, and there's no close substitutes. That's why there's only one person doing it, because there ain't nothing else like it. And the reason why there's nobody else doing the same thing is because it's freaking hard to do. All those barriers to entry we looked at. Maybe there's patents. The government will come down on you if you try to compete against them. Maybe it's Patents, monopoly licenses, maybe it's just your level of technology that's involved. They're paying the government. Yeah. All, all, those, all that list of things that we were looking at, the barriers to enter. It's tough, it's tough to economies of scale. I mean, granted, this is one, but like, how easy is it for you to start an automobile company, start making cars? Yeah, good luck with that. It's, it's taking hard. Just ask Elon Musk, right? He's, He's struggling to make it, and he's doing something different. The electric cars, but he's still struggling to be able to crank those suckers out. We'll swipe us somewhere, so yes. Yeah. So it's hard to do, and there's nobody doing anything like it. Not even close. Because if it's close, it would be a substitute. Well, I mean, it's 
speaking of Elon Musk, I mean, he started PayPal or something like that around. Yeah, he started PayPal, there's nothing around. But he didn't end up PayPal went a monopoly because, well, we've got other things to be with Venmo, is that? No. Is this Venmo? No, oh, I'm thinking of Vimeo, the video thing. Okay, but yeah, it's Venmo, and there's yeah, another one. Call it Cash Up. Yeah, Cash Out, Cash Up, something like that. Uh, if you want to know about those, you can talk to Kerry when he's in class tomorrow because that's how he's taking payments. If you want to get into his NCAA pool, I can't tell you the codes or whatever because I don't know him yet. But this is at least five dollars to buy when your takes off. And so, so. Consequently, if you're the only person doing it, you get to call all the shots when it comes to the market. You have all the power there. You invent, I don't know, a medicine that, I don't know, EpiPens? Okay, you invented, you invented EpiPens. You had a patent protection. Nobody else can make an EpiPen but you. That patent is protecting you. So if anybody else does it, you can sick the government on them. So is it if somebody wants an EpiPen, it's you or nothing. So if you decide you want to change the color of the EpiPen, you can do it. If you want to change what storage are going to get sold in, you can do it. If you want to change the color of the liquid, you can do it. You have all the power, you have all the control. If Microsoft wants to turn it to where your desktop wallpaper, instead of being kind of black and blue, if they want to change the thing for Windows 2020, if they want to change it to where it's like green and blue, what are you going to do about it? You got to suck it up because Microsoft, you got no other choice, right? They they can they can do whatever. All this crap down here with a little start menu and all that kind of stuff. That all these apps that they're forcing in there to say, you can tell it done installing it the next time it does an update next month and this crap is back on your computer again. They can do that because they're not because they're like, what else do you can do? Put Linux on your computer? <laughs> That's Microsoft attitude. Because everybody's like, well I only know Windows and Windows is the only thing that I know and trust the only thing I can get a driver to work the printer on and the only thing that my GPS will probably be updated the mess. So they have market power. So consequently, they are a price setter. You pay the price, they're going to charge, or you go without. I also said the wages. Uh, is it for an oligopsony? A monopsony? Yeah, they set the wages, but we're talking on the other side. We're just sticking to the monopoly side of it. They're the price setter. They're, you either buy it at the price that we're selling it, or forget about it. Yeah, because you, it sells me nothing. And so it's like, oh, you get the Epi Pen or eat some vitamin C's. Good luck, right? You either pay it or you don't, because there ain't nothing, there ain't no schleppy pen out there. You either buy the Epi Pen or you do something entirely different. So advertising isn't really that important, because if you need it, we're the only game in town, so we ain't got to go out there. Hey, we're cheaper than everybody. There is no anybody else, right? So what are you going to advertise about? We're cheaper than nobody because nobody else is there. We're better than, oh, there's nobody for us to be better than, right? I mean, have to be there. The only advertising you do, and I'm going to be this informative. Hi, we exist. That's pretty much it. Hi, we exist. And maybe a little bit of the, this is what our product can do, this is what it can do for you, and that's pretty much it. That's why I need it. To get away from Microsoft, let's think about a local electric company. You're going to get electricity from them or nobody, right? It's not like you see a commercial for Southside Electric on yeah. the TV. Southside Electric, they can be, come to Southside Electric, our electricity tastes better than how... <laughs> What do they do? When you buy a house in this area, who are you going to get electricity from? Southside Electric. So what do you do? You just walk out to the meter of the Southside the house, there's a little sticker that says, for service, call 1-800, right? Whatever the number is. And that's it. They don't need to be doing TV commercials or any of that kind of stuff or any of that kind of stuff. Boom. If they decide, well, right now, you what, what y'all call 110 volts is actually 120, but if they're like, well, we want to change the cycles to be 118, or we want to move it up to 135, they can do it. Yeah, you might have to buy your microwave, but that's what happened, because that would be plugged into them. Right? They have that power. Because they have the power. No, no pun 
pun intended there. I think that's the first time in all these years that I ever got there. But okay, so you so if the setting side regulation we're going to be coming to later, the electric company, you either get electricity from them or okay, you do candles. Because what else is close to getting electric with electricity from Southside Electric? Good luck. Solar panels, good luck. Candles, there you go. Get some mice and put them on a little hamster to put them on a little hamster wheel. There you go. Ain't nothing close. So we've got the power, we've got the control, and you're going to pay the price that we're selling it for, or good luck. Didn't you say that monopoly is illegal? Didn't you say monopoly is illegal? We're going to come to that next time. Overall, and why is Southside Electric the only company doing electricity in the county? It's freaking hard. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna finish. I know I'm running a bit long, but let me just tie the bow on this. If if Josie wanted to start Josie Electric Company here in this county, the Southside Electric is oh yeah, yeah, we like you. Well, you go ahead and run your wires on our pole too. No. So what's she gonna have to do? She's gonna have to run a whole new set of power poles and power cables up and down every street throughout the entire county. And then she's got to get a power generator that has got to generate fairly efficiently, but ooh, but it's only going to be she's only be selling probably half the people in the county, so it ain't going to be that big of a generator, so it may not be that efficient. Oh, crap. It, it's hard. That's why there's only one company for it. And we'll talk about those Thursday. Yes. Tune in. Same back time, same back channel. Y'all can see those in the but anyway.